Hey, I'm Matt, local historian from Belfont, Pennsylvania. Today we're going to visit the Black Diamond Barber Parlor and visit with Cody and talk history, talk local history. You'd be surprised how much history you can dig into in an everyday thing like a haircut. Come on. I want to bring back like the traditional style of the barbershop where it's a sense of community. Uh, you know, people actually knew each other. They weren't plastered to their phone and their face all the time or people would actually talk to one another. Um, and, you know, get a good haircut. Me and Eddie Fisher started uh, Badger and Hound in 2017 in a nail salon and it worked really well and Eddie's still doing it um, in State College at Badger and Hound. Uh, he's got some really good people in there working with him. I branched off and started Black Diamond and I'm just going to keep doing it. And the concept of the name came from basically my favorite color is black and the diamond in Belfont. I wanted to bring something to something into the name that brought Belfont into it. Um, so the diamond in Belfont is the diamond in the name. Cody's judgment-free and good-hearted nature makes it easy to feel at home and talk about anything during your haircut. That and being in such a historic setting meant our conversations turn to local history. So when it comes to barbers and history in this town, there's one name that stands out. The Dean of the Barber Fraternity of Belfont himself, William H. Mills. You might recognize the Mills name because of the Mills Brothers, a rock and roll hall of fame vocal group that broke through many racial barriers, just like their grandfather. That's right, they are the grandchildren of William H. Mills. William H. Mills had a barber shop near Governor's Pub between 1871 and 1931. That's 60 years. As you can see, there's a long tradition of barbers being active community members in this town. So while 25 cent haircuts are long gone, the mill's legacy lives on. One way to put it in perspective is to consider the fact that in 1872, Frederick Douglass, the great American orator and abolitionist leader, came to Belfont on a speaking series. And when he did, it was William H. Mills who gave Douglas a haircut. Now this might seem like a fun fact, but there's more to it, and it was no coincidence. Not only was William a community leader and member of the AME Church, but Mills learned the barber trade from a Mr. Mesh Graham, an African-American barber that became a mentor to Mills. And Mr. Graham, was an active member of the Belfont chapter of the Equal Rights League, a league founded by none other than Frederick Douglass during the Civil War. When you consider the prominent Underground Railroad history in Belfont, perhaps Mr. Graham mentored Mills in more than just barbering. Let's go back to the idea of William H. Mills giving Frederick Douglass a haircut in 1872. There they were, barber and client. Mills with Frederick Douglass in his chair. What was that conversation like? Did Mills ask Douglass questions about his upcoming lecture at Reynolds Hall? Did they talk about the Underground Railroad in Belfont? Or how Mills' father and uncle both served as USCT troops during the Civil War? 
did Mills recommend places for Douglas to eat? Or did they turn to more serious topics like the desegregation of schools? After all, 13 years after this conversation, Mills helped convince the Belfont School Board to desegregate its schools. That's about 70 years before Brown v. Board of Education. And Belfont has to be one of the first towns to do such in Pennsylvania or the nation for that matter. Wow, if we could only know how that conversation went. But hey, barbers and their clients have many private conversations, and that's just how it is. And it's one of the things that makes a community-minded barber parlor so special. Next time you listen to the Mills Brothers, think about this tremendous legacy of a local barber, William H. Mills, and his family. Before we left Black Diamond, Cody was nice enough to show us around his parlor and share some of his collection with us. So you said, uh, like you're, you're kind of into cars and rat rods and stuff. And yeah. this was a yeah. So that door is uh, it actually says McBaytown Fire Company on it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it says McBaytown Volunteer Fire Company. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I have the whole truck actually, the dash and the firewall. That's it right there. Um, and I turned it, it's actually a desk. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. I like uh, your stickers. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put anybody's sticker on it. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's the dash out of my, I had a 38 Chevy. Um, that, I saved the dash out of it. 38 Chevy. Yeah. I love it. Um, and this is part of the fire truck or part of yeah this is actually the like the front end and then like the dash yeah um, and i've collected all this stuff throughout the years this came this car came from bill mcintyre senior um <laughs> you know that time clock came from mcintyre chevrolet that's awesome and you said the truck was from milesburg the yeah. fire truck yeah yep the truck came very from cool milesburg. That cash register I restored, it, I, it came from Mishmash. Oh yeah, Mishmash, love Mishmash. Yeah. We hear that's haunted in our line of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old vintage embalming needle. These are uh, bone saws, because barbers used to be barber surgeons, so you'd go get like uh, amputated bloodletting tool. That's what that is.